I want to jump into this because every every company we have on here, you know, it's it's the resounding, you know, today we are a company that makes X, but we're also a media company. And Absolutely. because X is new, the product is new, and therefore the media company needs to either educate the consumer or make it really clear on what the product offering might be. And I think today we have a social media landscape that allows us to all kind of, even for us with the podcast media company on a real estate development, we film everything we do and we put together like this HDTV style show that was originally meant to be an investor update, to be honest, because oh, wow. I'm sure I'm sure you do investor updates. I used to do them and they, they, they never get read because, you know, Jason is an investor in hundreds of companies. And so why is he going to take 10 minutes out of his day to read your PDF? Right. Yep. And I would be like, I would get so mad at my investors. And at some point I realized, you know what, it's not the it's not it's the medium. It's the PDF. We need to change the medium. And so I started it just as a way to hey, investors, here's what's happening. And it, and it was like, great. It was like three minutes. Nick does a tremendous job with this super fun. As you think about media, I know we kind of spoke about this, but what are you looking to do in the media landscape from a real estate, uh, real estate perspective here in, in, in the coming years? We want to inspire that generation of entrepreneurs, those people who have been possibly sitting on the sidelines, have a dream in their head, have an idea, maybe consume a lot of content around that, but haven't actually done something, haven't taken that step to open their first Shopify store online, haven't taken a step to try a pop-up, haven't tried to go out and start trying to wholesale to different accounts, but trying to really think about how do we use our voice and our platform to catalyze people to action, to get out of your house, to get off your couch when it's safe, and bring about what it is in your head and try it. There's no harm in trying. And you, and when you try something that's been in your head, that catharsis, that creative catharsis that happens is one of the best feelings I think you can have as a human being who, who is passionate about something is being able to realize that in the full sense of that word of realization, bringing it into reality. And so we want to really use our Instagram, our YouTube channel we're about to create, our, our whole platform, our Twitter, to highlight what people are doing in your neighborhood, in a neighborly space, what their stories are, what their challenges are, how they got this success, what it takes. And then also I would say it's, it's, it's a little bit deeper than that, just not just inspiration, but to, to, to catalyze someone to move, they also need to be trained, they need to be equipped, they need to know how to take the right first steps if they do take those first steps and that's what we're all about doing. So we're the infrastructure that's going to help you do that safely in a fun way and in a way that is totally different than the way that commercial real estate used to work in the past. So we want to be able to talk to you, inspire you, train you, educate you, and then offer you the solutions and the infrastructure to go try it, to go do something. Let us help you with that in any way that we can. And I think media, has such an interesting role in retail right now, specifically, even, even restaurants, I'll throw that into retail. Like you see the Mr. Beast stories, you see, you know, the Kylie Jenner stories, those are obviously the, the most celebrated examples, but even on a micro scale, that restaurant I talked to you about Augie's in Berkeley has a phenomenal community around their business and they were pandemic proof because those people follow that entrepreneur and that chef. And Lex is a person that builds community. And so because of that, those people want to support him, whether or not he's open for in-person dining, out for outside dining, whatever, they want to be a part of what he's built. And he uses media as a way to connect with those people. And I see that happening with the most impressive creators in our network are people who don't actually have a physical footprint. This is some crazy like next level retail where your address no longer matters. You don't even have an address. Your address is your, your digital audience and the content and the value you create for them. Mm -hmm. And the addresses that you acquire in the future are ways to monetize that and to connect with those people in real life. They're ways to build your business. You do need to have an address. So use a neighborly pop-up in Santa Monica place to do your art show and hundred of your followers come and buy art and you make 2000 bucks in a weekend. You don't have to have your gallery on Monday morning and pay rent for the rest of the year. So like what we're seeing a lot of is these newer, this new generation of creators is really digital first, audience first and content first. And then they are on the back of that building businesses to monetize that in smart ways, not like cheesy ways, not selling themselves out, 
but thinking about what it is that they love to do that supports their audience, that their audience would consume and serving that up to them. So if you're just a hilarious Instagram account that's always doing memes and people love and you're just a comedy based account, how can you like bring that into the real life and bring those people together to do a one night pop up at a space and do a comedy show with your friends? Like, how do you, how do you do that? It's easy to do if you have access to the system and the, and the utilities, but in the past you had to have a physical address, start your comedy club at because that's the only way you could get an audience. Now your audience is infinite. It's global. It's free to access. Just like whoever creates the most entertaining and engaging value for people to, under, to connect with will then win later on in the physical world. And so it's a re complete reversal, I think, of the way when social media first came out, we all were like, hey, because I'm 35. And when social media came out, I was you know, in my 20s. And just like, what is this? How does this work? And you watched physical businesses adopt social media to build these followings. But no one really knew, OK, now I have this, this following and this voice and this platform. Now what? Maybe they'll buy stuff online. Cool. But that was the reverse of what's happening now, which is people are starting digital only and then adding physical later to enhance their, their business opportunities. So it's a really, we see media as the beginning point actually of a creator's journey uh, in a lot of ways. And that's exciting because there's a whole different way of framing how to bring your, your dreams into reality. You have the ability to do it right now and no one's stopping you. Do, open a $29 a month Shopify store, open an Instagram account, connect them together. Do what you need to do and see where that goes and if you can if you can do that then there's a million ways you can grow your business but it's very hard i'm seeing to do the opposite these days people who are physical only or haven't adopted kind of an audience-based content strategy are really suffering right now because the foot traffic that they relied upon is gone not coming back anytime soon and they're still grasping at straws because they haven't built up or thought about that strategy before and uh, there's there's going to be a tough transition period as we go through that in the next year or two. But again, looking at the bright side and not the, not the negative side, the barriers to entry are basically zero now if you care about something. And hell yeah, like it's one of the best things the internet's brought to us is the decentralization of everything. So let's ride that out. Let's be positive with our content. Let's create content that helps people, that's looking out for one another, that's engaging and entertaining. And then let's figure out ways to serve on top of that and provide another layer of business. And so we really, really, really are pushing it within Neighborly right now to enhance our storytelling and content creation so that people can get a glimpse of what people do in a Neighborly. So it's not just like, oh, I come to this website, it's like I can rent a meeting space or an event space, what do I do now? Like you should see what people are doing. It's incredible stories, but we have been really bad in the past at doing that. And I, when I talk about physical businesses not having an audience, we were one of those. Literally up until two weeks ago, we started, started focusing on this. It's never too late. That's my also message, never too late. It's not too late for us. It's not too late for anyone listening to this. Get going, you gotta start. The best day to start is always today. And so that for us is, is a big focus for the next two years is enhancing that and not enhancing our story about who we are, enhancing the story of what you can do and who you are. It's a good way to look at media, and I think if we do that, then you're really like building a moat around your business.